and welcome to Reframe and Recharge. This is a webinar specifically made for you if you are an event organizer, an executive director of an association, somebody who is a meeting planner. Now, in this webinar, we're going to explore some practical strategies to conquer stress, minimize burnout, and thrive in your roles as event organizers. We are going to delve into the power of reframing those limiting beliefs unlock your full potential, and cultivate a healthier mindset that propels your success in the dynamic world of event planning. Now, if you're not already familiar with me, I'm Dr. Sharon Grossman. I am a keynote speaker and, more importantly, a burnout expert. And so I've spent really over 20 years as a psychologist understanding how people think and helping them to think in a better way so they feel more in control and less stressed. Now, the reason I put this event together for you is because as executive directors, event organizers, and meeting professionals, you face very unique challenges and pressures in your roles. There's this really strong demand that your industry brings with regards to event planning, and that can often lead to stress and burnout. And honestly, I don't think that gets talked about enough. So this is really specifically designed for you and it's supposed to provide you with some practical solutions and empower you to overcome some of these challenges. Now, when we talk about limiting beliefs, I was trying to think about what are some potential limiting beliefs that you might be experiencing that are part of just your every day that you're just kind of like tackling your own mind. So here are some examples. One might be, if I don't meet every deadline perfectly, it's a failure. Now, this is a belief that can really lead to excessive pressure and stress when you're trying to manage multiple tasks and deadlines. Another one might be, I have to do everything myself for it to be done right. And this is really just that perfectionism again, right? Where you feel like I really can't delegate it to anybody else because they're just not going to do it as well as I can do it. And I get that. A lot of my clients are struggling with those same things. And that's part of what leads to the overwhelm because they've got so much stuff on their plate. They just can't let any of it go. Another one might be that unexpected challenges are always setbacks. So when you experience things and we're going to talk about some of that today, that belief creates anxiety and frustration, especially when those um, unforeseen obstacles show up in the midst of your attempt to plan an event. Another one might be, if I ask for help, it means that I'm incapable or weak. So if you hold that belief, you are less likely to ask for help. And what that really translates into is that you're again trying to do everything yourself, right? And that hinders your willingness even to seek support or even guidance. And finally, another final belief might be, I must achieve perfection in every aspect of the event. And that creates just a lot of pressure and stress again, um, because, hey, let's face it, perfectionism is unattainable. And it's going to just lead to a lot of self-criticism when you set unrealistic expectations, and we're going to talk about expectations in just a minute, you, um, you know, you kind of get stuck. And so you really want to go for more of a growth mindset, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So if you want to boil it all down, it really comes down to things like perfectionism, as we said, the lack of self-compassion and the need to be in control. That's what's really behind some of these limiting beliefs. So today I'm going to share a couple of examples of how to embrace the unexpected and to manage your tasks with less stress and pressure. So my first, my first point that I want to talk about is embracing flexibility. And I want to share with you a story about the birth of my daughter. So for any of you who are parents, I think you'll appreciate this, that you know, when you are going into labor, whether it's you or it's your partner, there is everything that is unexpected, right? You cannot plan for this really well. I mean, you can try, but ultimately you really don't know how it's going to go. So here we were, my water broke 
and I am off to the hospital and they put me in a room and nothing's really happening. So I'm just sitting around waiting. I have dinner with my husband and then right around 11 o'clock, I decide, you know what? I'm just going to go to sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, then we'll do this. Well, what happened was right around uh, that time at uh, around 11 p.m., that's when it actually started. And so what that meant was that I wasn't going to get any sleep that night. And I don't need to tell you that labor is intense. So here I am like really powering through all night long and it took 12 hours, but I didn't know that. I didn't know how long it was actually going to take. So in my mind, I was having this inner battle of what if it takes like longer than I can like physically and mentally hold myself. Like I just didn't know how long it was going to take. And that alone, I think was driving me more crazy than the experience itself. So in essence, I had this one plan in my mind of how this is going to go, but as you know, it didn't go as planned. It was significantly longer and harder than I had planned for. And that just left me feeling totally exhausted. Sometimes, as I said, not knowing how long a stressor is going to last, that actually causes more stress. And that's what I found in that experience. So for me, the takeaway was that life and for you, maybe event planning just They don't always go as planned and unexpected challenges can leave us feeling absolutely exhausted. Now, as much as we want to control things, we sometimes have to embrace flexibility. Now, there are some techniques for doing that. Uh, The first one is really a mindset shift. So you want to try to be adaptable to change. And maybe a mantra that you can adopt is embrace change, go with the flow, adaptability is how I'll grow. And of course, you can always schedule some scenarios, you know, in in case of scenario A, this is what I'm going to do. So have this like, uh, prepared contingency plan. And then for scenario B and C, you can have additional plans. However, you also want to be careful about not having too many of those because What's going to happen is you're going to drive yourself crazy and that's only going to increase your anxiety, right? So I want to caution you from maybe having too many of these plans. And finally, it's really important to have clear communication with your team members and your stakeholders because when you don't have that clear communication, that's where things actually fall through the cracks and that can create additional unexpected stressors for you. So what I'd love for you to do is think about what kind of unexpected challenges come up for you when you're doing event planning and how you've dealt with them in the past. That's going to really give you something to think about that you can take forward with you. All right. So we've already talked about the first point. And then the second one is about managing deadlines and stress. And, you know, if I've already told you one story about the unexpected and it had to do with my daughter, I kind of have to tell you this other story, which is really about the birth of my son. This was a completely different experience. So what happened was I was absolutely in that mindset of that first birth. And, you know, you kind of expect things to go the same way each time. But this was so radically different that I could not have prepared myself for that. And I'm sure for you, as a meeting planner, you experience the same kind of things. You probably have some things that keep happening in the same ways. And then there's those things that you could have never seen them coming. So in this case, I was, my dad had just come into town and I picked him up from his hotel And we're about to get in the car and drive over to my house. But I started to feel the contractions coming. And I said to him, would you mind driving? Now he is easily freaked out. So we're in the car and I'm I'm thinking, you know, this is what they're always telling me. 
you got to just go for a walk. Let's go to the beach. So we're driving. And as we're driving, the contractions are getting stronger and stronger. So I said, you know what, I'm going to just give a call to the nurse line. And so I called them from the car and explained exactly what I was experiencing. And I said, should I come in? And they said, you know, sometimes it starts and stops. So why don't you go home and take a bath? So we kind of detoured, went home, and I filled up the bath. And in I get, and now it is getting so intense that I could barely get out to get dressed, towel myself off, go to the hospital. So my dad's there in the back of the door, and he's just like totally freaking out. And he's like, what do you want me to do? Should I call an ambulance? Like, what are we doing? So finally, I go in between contractions. I'm like drying myself off with the towel. I get my clothes on and make my way slowly down the stairs. By the time I get downstairs, the paramedics haven't come, but the firefighters are now in my garage. So I've got this woman there with a clipboard and she's going through and she's kind of asking me, tell me when the contractions start and stop. And she's sitting there making notes. And then long story short, they, the, once the paramedics get there, they're like, where is your hospital? And I tell them, and it's about a 20 minutes drive, but now it's rush hour. And they're like, you're not going to make it. Well, what they really said was, you've got two choices. You can go to your hospital and you'll give birth in the ambulance, or you can go to this other hospital, which is close to right. So I made the decision to go to the closer hospital. I get out and they put me on a stretcher and they're just like, this is like an episode out of ER. They are running down the hall with me and just getting me into the delivery room. And it went so fast. My husband didn't even have a chance to get there from work. He missed the birth of our son because he came literally within minutes of me arriving there. It didn't go as planned. And it was actually, in this particular case, significantly shorter than I expected, which meant that I didn't actually have the time I thought that I would need. Sometimes we say to ourselves, you know, it's better if things are shorter because if it's longer, it causes more stress, right? But they're both potentially stressful. The idea is if you have an expectation, anything that deviates from where your expectation is, whether it's longer or shorter can be stressful. And so for me, the takeaway is that sometimes we underestimate how long things will take. And when we see a deadline approach, we can really become stressed out about it. So I want to share just a few techniques for managing deadlines and stress. Obviously, the biggest one is time management. And so I want you to think about some effective time allocation and prioritization ideas, right? What are some things that you've used in the past to help you manage your time when you know that you've got something like 20, 30 different details to attend to? You want to also break things down. When you break things down, it creates less overwhelm. So sometimes we have this huge task, right? Like you've got to put it on events. But when you break it down into the multiple components of that, then you can just focus on one aspect at a time. And even within those, you can further break them down in terms of the people you need to call or the different things you need to research or the calls you need to make um, to just secure different vendors, to talk to the speakers, to figure out all the logistics. So just breaking things down into smaller tasks is a great way to prevent overwhelm. And then just like with anyone else, and this is something that I would say to your audiences, if I was speaking to them at one of your conferences, I would say it's also important to focus on self-care and stress relief. There are different practices for both of these. And what I often like to share is that there's a difference between things that energize us and things that help us de-stress. And it's important that you put together the right kind of strategies because sometimes we think that it's one thing that we need, like we'll be wired and tired. And then we get into bed and we're like, oh, I just want to get some sleep. 
But if you're so wired, you can't fall asleep, right? So then you're sitting there and you're thinking about all the different details of all the things you need to do for work. It's not going to work for you. You're not going to fall asleep. You're going to actually waste more time. So what I recommend in that case is do something first to de-stress, to really take the edge off so that you can relax and then fall into sleep. So what is it that relaxes you? Maybe it's listening to some calming music. Maybe it's doing some stretches, drinking some chamomile tea. Everybody's got something that works for them. I love a good bubble bath or reading a nice book on the couch. So think about what's gonna help you so that you're doing the right thing for yourself. Now, we're all gonna have our own different versions of how we manage deadlines and stress when it comes to event planning. So I want you to think about what are the things that you found most effective in all of your years of experience of doing this work. Maybe you've got some sort of a playbook, but have you ever thought about what are other people in my field doing? Maybe just hearing from them would be super helpful for you to get some new ideas. So today we talked a lot about expectations and I've got this keynote on stress where I talk about expectations as one of four types of stressors. And spoiler alert, when I talk about expectations in this presentation, one of the strategies that I share is to look to your past to predict your future. It's kind of like what we talked about with your situation, what has helped you in the past. But not only that, you might also use that to think about what is most likely, whether it's with certain vendors, whether it's with your speakers, what are the things that have happened so much in the past that maybe they've created some kind of a pattern. And if you were really tuned into that pattern, you would know what to expect this time around. And if you can set your expectations to be more realistic rather than what you want them to be, you're less likely to get disappointed, feel frustrated, or become stressed out. Now, I couldn't really apply that for my child birthing experiences because I'm not planning on having more children, right? But my guess is that in your world of event planning, things aren't always that different from event to event. So for you, this technique would really be great. You can really lean on your past to know what is likely going to move you forward rather than setting unrealistic expectations for yourself. And as I said, getting disappointed. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to reframing your circumstances that lead to stress. And I know that it applies not only to you, but also to your members who are dealing with very different stressors in their work. And so I want you to think about what is the biggest takeaway that you got from today. And I'd love to continue the conversation too. Because as I said, stress is something that isn't going to go away. And when it builds, because we're not sure how to manage our own minds, you are actually at risk for burnout, which is something that is caused by chronic stress. So if your company is having a conference, I invite you to explore my keynote speaking engagements on stress management and creating that thriving work environment. I'm going to put a link to... Uh, a virtual coffee that you can have with me if you're interested in talking about this further. I also want to invite you to join me next month where I am exploring a brand new topic, which is very cutting edge. It is my webinar on how to utilize AI to grow your EQ. Now, I know that you've got your stressors. You've got all of your very unique challenges as event organizers, executive directors, meeting planners. I also know that you don't have a seat at the table, but if I were at your meeting and I was talking to your attendees, here's what I would tell them. Stress is really about perception. And how do we know that? Because if you and maybe your colleague or your partner or a friend of yours were dealing with the exact same situation, and we saw this during COVID, you and the other person 
might have a completely different interpretation. You might have a completely different outcome, right? Because one of you might see that situation as very stressful. And the other might be like, what's the big deal? Because different things stress us out, we each burn out for a very different reason. And it is the accumulation of stressors on a chronic basis that creates burnout within us. And because we burn out for different reasons, it's really important to understand not just what got us there in terms of the stressors, but also how to unravel that, how to become less stressed out about those specific things. So what I do is I really share some global techniques about managing expectations, about um, your interpretation of things, how to really get in control of your mind. And what I really hope is that this helps you to have less stress. Now, as a psychologist, I have been trained in these modalities and these ways of thinking for something like 20 plus years. And that's how long I've been practicing it with my clients. And now I've given these at least a, a few tools today to you so that you can have less stress. And I can also help your attendees have less stress as well. So I hope to have the opportunity to talk with you directly and see how what we're doing here today can be helpful for your events. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Sharon Grossman, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.